China's new imaging satellite has been making the news recently, with its ability to scan large swaths of the Earth thanks to its ability to rotate quickly and continuously. The satellite is called the Beijing 3, the third commercial satellite ran by the DFH Satellite Company under the Chinese Academy of Space and Technology. Many media outlets are really building up the hype and fear around it being able to photograph US cities, specifically San Francisco. Others reporting it's a major problem and headache for the US military. So is it? But first, our new sponsor, NordPass. As you know, passwords are a major pain. Some people just use the same password for every website, which is obviously a horrible idea. So you need to use different passwords for every account, but then you can't remember them. I can't even begin to count how many times recently I've had to reset my password for my security cameras. NordPass is a password manager, keeping all your passwords in one secure place. Then you might think that, well, if someone hacks them, then they'll have everything. But NordPass is a zero-knowledge password manager, which means that no one but you can ever see what's in your encrypted vault. Not even NordPass themselves. And it's also incredibly easy to use, with automatic logins on websites, easily importing your other passwords from things like web browsers, and much more. And although Christmas has already passed, it's not too late to take advantage of their deal. 70% off NordPass Premium at nordpass.com covert, or use the code covert. Plus, you'll get an additional month for free. And just as their other product, NordVPN, they also give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go check them out and grab that deal before it's too late. Typical Earth observation and imaging satellites are placed in a real high inclination orbit. That way, as the Earth rotates underneath them, they can photograph every area of the Earth. Beijing 3 is in a 97.5 degree inclination, so pretty close to a polar orbit, but more specifically, a sun synchronous orbit to get the best lighting conditions. They're also in low Earth orbit, close enough to the Earth so that they can get the most detailed picture possible. Beijing 3 is in roughly a 500 km orbit, so 500 km above the surface. As these satellites orbit, they are constantly taking pictures, so you'll end up with strips like this. Depending on the altitude, the camera specifications, etc., you can get roughly a full image of the Earth from one satellite every week or so. A quicker way of doing it, then, is obviously just to have more satellites. The more satellites, the more ground you can cover. So, for example, if one took eight days, two would take four days. However, this Beijing 3 satellite has another method, that is rotating the camera back and forth. This could make those strips much wider, therefore covering a larger area quicker. It stated that it can rotate 10 degrees per second. Now, they didn't state if that's the maximum it can rotate, or just the speed at which it does, but 10 degrees at 500 kilometers would give you an extra 100 kilometers of view. And this is great and useful if you wish to do wide area surveillance of regions, or if you are Google Earth and want to get a full image of the Earth, but oftentimes it's more important to watch one specific location for a period of time. That way you can see the movements, observe changes, and in doing so, get a more complete picture of what's going on, or possibly even making that picture into a video. That video wouldn't be very long, a few minutes at best, but combine that with viewing over multiple orbits, and potentially in the future with multiple satellites, this can give large windows to observe targets on the ground. To be clear though, this isn't necessarily anything new. Imaging satellites often take pictures at what is called off-nadir angles. One good example of this was the image President Trump tweeted out showing an Iranian rocket failure. It was taken at an angle of roughly 46 degrees. But the difference with the Beijing 3 is that it can continuously take extremely high resolution photographs while it is rotating. The theoretical limit would be until it's at 90 degrees at the horizon or out of range. In this sense, it could be thought of somewhat similar to SpaceX's Starlink. Starlink seeks to have at least one satellite over an area at all times. That way any single location has continuous coverage. And Starlink is also in a similar orbit, most at 550 kilometers to Beijing 3's 500. However, as you probably know, to do so at such a low altitude, Starlink requires several thousand satellites. So it's unlikely that China would ever build enough to provide constant high-resolution coverage of a location. Also, similar with satellite imagery and communications, the higher altitude you have would give you a wider field of view, meaning you would need significantly fewer of them. However, as with all cameras, the further you are away, the lower the resolution of any one particular point. And speaking of resolution, Beijing 3 is stated to be about 50 centimeters. For comparison, the satellite imagery you'd see on Google Earth is between 25 and 50 centimeters. Although certain cities you'll see are better, as those images come from airplanes taking higher resolution images. 
but 50 centimeters is enough to clearly identify buildings, vehicles, and other large objects. One interesting comparison that these media outlets are making is to certain US satellites, saying that it's not as good. For example, it's 50 centimeters compared to Maxar's 30 centimeter imagery, which they recently started combining with others to create 15 centimeter imagery. But that's not exactly a fair comparison. Higher resolution isn't always better. For example, Planet Labs has 23 satellites that can take images at 50 centimeter resolution, but they also continue to launch other, smaller ones with much lower resolution, between 300 and 500 centimeters. Since they are smaller, they can launch a lot more of them, which gives them the ability to photograph nearly every spot on Earth multiple times a day. SpaceX's Transporter 1 mission, for example, deployed 48 of them in a single launch. So China's Beijing 3 seems to be trying to find that sweet spot between being an extremely large and heavy satellite with extremely high resolution, but limited in how much ground it can cover in one day, and being a much smaller, lighter satellite, which can be easily deployed in large numbers and cover a lot of ground, but at a much lower resolution. And they are doing this with a camera that can rotate, again, something that is a pretty incredible capability. Typically, a camera needs to remain as still as possible in order to achieve such high resolutions, otherwise it just comes out blurry. Other satellites doing this have to rotate first, then take the picture, and then rotate back. So it is a major step up. Does it have the best resolution? No. Is it the smallest and lightest, enabling large constellations of them? No. Is this one satellite going to change everything? Nope. But it's a great balance, and as long as it works as advertised, it will inevitably lead to many, many more being launched, giving China an incredible capability to watch and monitor nearly any site on Earth continuously.